you get to ask any questions that you really want to ask. Um, there's just a couple of things that I'm going to say. Uh, first off, uh, a little bit about myself, a little bit about the department, you know, how I got into engineering, uh, a couple of things that I think are really interesting about ISE. And then um, a couple of things that I think you might need to know as someone who would be entering in this fall. And um, since I'm also speaking to students that are coming next fall, just a couple of things. So it won't take me very long to get through that um, and feel free to interrupt me at any time. So um, I'm actually from Arkansas. Uh, I grew up actually I was born in Maryland and lived in West Virginia, moved around. But I say I'm from Arkansas because that's where I graduated high school from. Um, when I was getting out of high school, I had no idea what it is I wanted to do other than I was very interested in being a math teacher and a basketball coach. So my 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 road to becoming an engineer was kind of interesting. I actually ended up getting a letter from Boston College in my senior year offering me a scholarship if I pursued engineering at their university. Well, a little girl from Arkansas town of 2000 was not going to go to Boston and attend Boston College. So I asked my counselors what engineering was. I read through the definitions. And at that time, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but at that time, biomedical engineering didn't exist. So the only engineering that even mentioned a person was industrial engineering. And they talked about the management side and they talked a little bit about human factors and ergonomics. So ultimately I said, all right, well, let's just try engineering in industrial engineering. And truthfully, I was not real happy with my choice my first two years, but the best thing about it is your first two years in engineering are kind of all the same. It's all calculus. It's all the uh, chemistries and the physics and the statics and all the stuff that you need to do any engineering discipline, actually. So when I took my first true industrial engineering class, it was called work methods at the time. That course is now um, industrial ergonomics or occupational ergonomics and also our in our introduction to lean systems course the intro course that you'll take in your first semester and when i took that class i absolutely fell in love with ie and every class i took after that i loved except for the or stuff so i'm not an or person but that's okay um uh work methods was really about how to look at the work environment and how the worker responds to that so that Part of me that wanted to uh, look at the human aspect was really fed in that. And then I took the engineering administration and project management courses, and that really fed my interest in, in, in management as well. So uh, I was very pleased in the end once I took that very first true IE course and loved and have never regretted uh, going after my IE degree. Now I am one of six, um, so paying for my education was all on my shoulders. And I managed to do it in every single possible way that you can imagine, including Pell Grants, uh, federal student loans. I was a work study student. Uh, I did have scholarships. I did have fellowships, you know, but if there was a way to pay for school, then I found a way to find access to that money. So it's certainly something that you can do. I I'll, will also tell you that I was a student that did stumble. So in the second semester of my freshman year, I, going into spring break, I had all A's and coming out of that semester, I had C's. So, you know, if you do stumble along the way, it's okay. Um, don't worry about it. You just pick yourself up, speak to your professors. And I was lucky I had some professors that were really watching out for me and pulled me in and talked to me. Um, and I think you'll find that type of relationship uh, with your faculty here at ISE. So, and I think in terms of that, if you ever have questions or concerns, or you're wondering, have I made the right decision? You're gonna have faculty and a department head that really cares uh, and will love to sit down and talk to you about that. Um, so that's ultimately how I got into engineering. Um, I was also one, uh, being one of six, was not planning on getting a PhD, uh, but I was very lucky, Mississippi State, offered to pay for uh, my master's degree and my PhD. So each time I was graduating with all of my degrees, my, mas uh, my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, um, I had really good job offers to go join industry, uh, but I was one of those that was taught to value education and if they were gonna pay for it, I was going to take it. Uh, so I ultimately uh, decided on, on earning that PhD and liked academia. I uh, was interested in becoming a college professor. So when I graduated from Mississippi State for the third time, uh, I had left and joined the faculty at Virginia Tech. 
stayed there for six years, was very successful, uh, was about to be promoted and tenured, and decided to take an opportunity to come back to my alma mater. And I have loved Mississippi State as a student, and I love it as a faculty member and as an administrator. So I told you what I thought was the absolute best thing about ISE, and that is the faculty and the student body that you're going to be joining. Like I said, these faculty really have your best interests at heart. And one of the best faculty at that is your undergraduate coordinator, Dr. Leslie Strauderman. So anytime you need a touch point dealing with the undergraduate program, uh, what courses you should be looking at, she's a really good resource for you. Um, you're going to be assigned uh, an advisor. I'm sure you've already spoken with Dr. Strauderman and chosen your courses for the first semester. Um, but then you're going to be assigned one of the other faculty, most likely. It may be Dr. Strauderman, it may be myself, it may be one of the other 10 faculty that we have in this department, but you will have a faculty advisor to help you. And I think one of the really good things that we also do in the department is we don't just advise on courses. You know, that's normally what you're most interested in, but we're going to advise you on career paths. We're going to advise you on ex extracurricular activities. We're going to encourage you to become as involved in the university the college and the department as you would like. Um, some other interesting things about ISE, um, you know, it's often difficult to describe what an industrial engineer does. Uh, in fact, my mom does a much better job of describing what a human factors and ergonomics professional does because that's my particular area of industrial engineering. Um, but the way I kind of look at it is when you talk about civil engineers, they're going to build a bridge or structure. If you talk to an electrical engineer, they're going to build the next best electrical component. And uh, a mechanical engineer is going to design the next, next best mechanical component. Well, what we do is we take all of those and then we tell you how to build it. We are process people. How are you going to get the material so that you can build that mechanical component or that structure or that electrical component? What processes do you need to actually fabricate and make those parts? And then how do you design the work task so that the human can fit into there seamlessly and it matches up with what we are able to do both physically and mentally? And then how do you get this completed product out to uh, the customer base? And now I've talked about very physical products, but they can be very service oriented. Um, it could be you know, telehealth medicine services. So industrial engineers are really good at describing what the processes should be to share those services with the patients or information back to uh, the doctors themselves. Um, and I'm not saying we don't build things. We have athlete engineering, which is an interesting aspect of the entire college, but is, is kind of founded within ISE. So they're looking at, you know, wearable sensors. How can we place things on the joints of the body so that we can evaluate what the risks are when sports athletes, industrial athletes, military athletes are going through and, and, and completing their tasks, their work tasks, whichever they happen to be. Um, so really, if you think about it, there's not any single industrial sector that you will not find an industrial engineer. Uh, and we are, we're very popular in, in just about everything. Uh, we co-op at every single industrial sector as well. So even though Alabama Power or TVA you would typically think an, an electrical engineer would go co-op at. They are looking for industrial engineers as well because they need that skill set in terms of the process evaluation for those industries as well. Um, I also think uh, if you have that kind of management bent to your mind, industrial engineers are perfect for managing other engineers and moving up within their respective organizations. One of that is one reason for that is we take courses from nearly every engineering discipline. So we can talk to the MEs, we can talk to the ECEs, we can talk to the BMEs or, or whichever discipline you want to talk to. Um, but because we do look at everything from a process perspective, uh, it makes us very efficient and, and it really helps to advance our organizations, which is, again, one of those reasons why we move through those management ranks. Um, as an incoming student in fall 2020, Anna, you are coming in under our new curriculum, and we're really excited about it. Um, it's still 128 total hours, but uh, there is a lot of increased flexibility in the curriculum that our current students that are junior, seniors, 
who it may not make sense for them to transfer into the new curriculum, you'll be able to take advantage of. There's additional IE electives. So if you happen to be one that loves OR, the, let, the math piece of industrial engineering, then you can take additional courses in that. If you love the management piece, if you love um, the manufacturing side, or if you love the human factors and ergonomic side, or just the general system side, there are additional electives built in as well. We also have some electives called the approved elective and the professional elective. The professional elective can be student competition teams. It can be undergraduate research. It can be a, a course from another engineering discipline, STEM discipline, or management discipline that forwards your career goals. And then the approved elective is a little more open and flexible, but again, it's, it's there to help you specialize or gain skill sets and something that you're really interested in. Maybe you want to pull some cybersecurity information or some bioengineering or biomedical engineering into the IE curriculum, and that's what those electives help you do. So I personally love industrial engineering, of course. You know, I got three degrees in it. Why wouldn't I love it? Um, got all of my degrees from Mississippi State, though I don't suggest you do that, Anna, if you stay. Um, I, I would prefer you go away for one, come back for another, or get you know, get your bachelor's, your master's here. And you're probably not even thinking about that. But one last thing to drop in your head and get you thinking about already, even though you're a freshman, is we have an accelerated program. Um, I think it's called a Thrive in Five program now at Mississippi State. But essentially what you do is you're allowed to count up to 15 hours or double count 15 hours between your undergraduate degree and a graduate degree in either IE or uh, in the MBA. So depending on uh, what your interests are, you would take the graduate level of five of your courses as an undergraduate student. Uh, and then once you complete that, they go back and give you credit at the undergraduate level. So you could leave in five years with two degrees from Mississippi State relatively easy. So that's kind of my little spiel for you. Um, Anna, if you have any questions about our program, anything that I've said, I'm happy to Answer those for you. Um, so earlier I mentioned that like ultimately I wanted to like work for Disney and stuff. Mm -hmm. and so when do you think that I like I would I would want to try and do like a co-op or an internship or something? And when would you recommend me doing that? So anytime we have the co-op program here in open, so interview days uh, or anything like that, go and talk to them. There are some rules and restrictions, and I'm going to really point you to the Career Center uh, and the co-op office to get accurate, 100% accurate answers. But most of our students will not start co-oping until late into their sophomore or the start of their junior year. Co-ops are typically three rotations. Uh, a lot of time it's one semester at MSU, one semester working, one semester at MSU, one semester working until you complete three cycles of that. But we do have some uh, organizations that do like to have one, su one summer session and then you come back to Mississippi State for the fall and then you're with them for a spring and a summer. That gives you a longer period of time. It allows you to uh, participate in larger, more complex projects. Um, and typically some training happens on that first one if some students need clearances. Um, so I would actually hook you up with Dylan to talk about that. But one other thing that I forgot to mention is I have had students approach me about a student organization that is focused directly in this area. Uh, and I've agreed to fund it uh, initially. Right now it's a little bit on hold because of COVID-19, but those students and I are working on standing up that organization so that you can attend conferences and have other experiences for students that are also interested in pursuing uh, careers or, or jobs in that field. I think that's yes. all the questions that I have. Okay. All right. Um, are you interested in graduate graduate school at all? Or do you think? I or don't right know. Now? I don't, don't know. know. Okay. Um, well, don't 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 be surprised when your faculty continue to talk to you about that. Um, Sarah Lipscomb is a student that I hold up. She came into my office to meet me, uh, and I talked to her about the accelerator program. She was absolutely not interested in it. 
she ultimately decided to take the classes because it's, you know, if, even if she didn't get the degree, it didn't hurt her at all. She ended up getting her master's degree and is now working at FedEx and she co-opted FedEx. So, um, you know, just keep it in the back of your mind as an option. Like you, I was not interested in graduate school either, but, you know, here I am, got a PhD and everything. <laughs> yeah. Joy, is, do you have any comments or is there something else you think I might need to mention for any students coming in? No, I think you hit it, um, everything and really, um, and Anna, if I can kind of add to the, the graduate school kind of conversation, um, I was like you going in, I had no idea what I wanted to do um, and I graduated with my undergrad and then Eight years later, started my master's, and I, if I could tell my students anything, it is do it while you're still in the mindset of school, um, because you're you're thinking that way. I'd been in the professional world for eight years and came back and started writing papers and um, all these really fun things called annotated bibliographies, and <laughs> um, I realized very quickly that I was out of the swing of things with college. So it was a little bit of an adjustment. Granted, I'm still doing it. I am finishing up my comprehensive exams right now, but um, I definitely encourage students to go as soon as they finish their undergrad. So just definitely think about it. I think the five to thrive is a great option. Um, the cool thing with industrial and systems engineering is there's several different options <laughs> that you have. Um, you have the dual deg degree program with IE and business, and you also have the accelerated program for engineering and for business administration. So there are lots of options for our industrial and systems engineering students, and um, any of us are here to help you and answer questions that you may have for those. So definitely encourage those. And even if you leave us and go join Disney, and start a wonderful <laughs> career. Don't forget about distance ed, okay? Okay. Also, I love Disney. I lived there for five years. So um, I wasn't an engineering student, but I can potentially help you uh, kind of navigate what that looks like. Um, I definitely encourage looking into the professional internships there. It helps you for sure. Okay. All right, well, I think that is all for today. Um, so Dr. Reeve, thank you so much. And Anna, thank you for being so flexible. Um, I know it's a little bit different uh, technical difficulties, but um, we persevered. That's the most important thing. And uh, this recording, we are gonna save it um, to potentially go on the website a little bit later. But we do have a newsletter that we update every month. Um, I know you're coming in in the next month. So there are a lot of deadlines that are kind of coming up. Um, if you've not signed up for a new Maroon Camp, they are closing registration today at midnight. So if you are wanting to do that, I would definitely encourage you to do that, but they are letting students know that you cannot do Panhellenic recruitment and new Maroon Camp at the same time. So just FYI, um, but if there is anything you need, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to help and um, Thank y'all so much. I think you can see me, maybe not. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, there you are. Yeah, Anna, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Um, like I said, you've probably already stopped, spoken with Dr. Stratman. And if you hadn't, hadn't, you'll be speaking with her soon. So we're here. Yep. Okay, great. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Yeah. Well, stay safe, be well, and health state. Thanks y'all. Thank you. Bye-bye.